Today we're releasing the beta of Flop, an Unreal Engine AI agent that can actually drive the editor. Not suggest steps, but actually do them. I'm going to walk through the product, the UI, the features, where it's strong, where it breaks, and how you can get access. If you build an Unreal, you already know the pain. Unreal workflows are powerful, but they're also click heavy. You lose time searching for assets, repeating layout patterns, nudging transforms, rebuilding the same steps over and over. It's all doable, it just burns momentum. The whole idea of Flop is simple. You describe your intent, and the agent translates that into real editor operations and runs them, so you can keep moving. Flop isn't just a chatbot bolted into Unreal. This isn't a plugin that chats. It's an agent built around callable tools exposed by the plugin, and the UI shows you exactly what it tried so you can trust it, debug it, and understand what actually happened. So just to be clear, this is a beta version. It will not do everything. It will sometimes misunderstand vague prompts. It will sometimes hit tool errors. But it's not the kind of beta where it fails and you're stuck. When something breaks, it retries, adjusts, and a lot of time it gets it on the second or third attempt. The way to use it is give it constraints, attach context when you can, and treat big tasks as a sequence of smaller steps. If you do that, it's already extremely useful. So if you're expecting it will do everything in the world for you at this moment, I would hold off on those expectations for this beta, as we need to first just get some valuable data and feedback on the flow for the tools that it has now. And I will be frank, this was and still is a very complicated problem to solve with building a full functional AI agent around the entire engine. We are also exploring bringing on some experienced Unreal developers to help build this agent with us. So if you're interested in that, please send us an email with your information and why you're interested in helping out. All right, let's jump into showcasing the product and the features. First, I'm just gonna run through the product flow like a normal user. You hit the Flopperam website, go to the Unreal Agent page, then you'll hit the sign up button, fill out the information and accept the terms of service. You'll get a confirmation email that you can click to confirm your account. And once you've confirmed your account, you're back in the website and you'll land on the agent landing page logged in. You'll see a few things here. First, you'll see a pending access button to launch the agent. If you're a second prestige Patreon member or above, you can get in right now for the beta. That's the guaranteed path. If you're a free member, we're letting people in based on availability and join date as we scale. So make sure to sign up on Patreon here if you want to get access now. And we're giving out a bunch of credits to people during the beta because we want you to actually use it. The whole point is try real stuff, hit edge cases, tell us what broke, tell us what you wish it could do. And also, once you've logged into the website, you should see this plugin download banner. You can grab the plugin either directly through the site or through the Google Drive link, whichever is easier for you. You need this plugin because that's what the AI agent actually talks to in Unreal Engine. After you download it, follow the setup steps, do as you normally would with a zip folder, extract it, take the flop AI folder and drop it into your project plugin folder on your machine. Also, make sure you're running Unreal Engine 5.7.1 that's the version that's required for the plugin to work properly. And one last thing, I highly recommend you make a backup of your project before you use this agent. It's a beta and it can go off the rails sometimes. So don't run it on the only copy of something that's important to you. Use a backup or version control so you can always roll back. Now once you've been given access, you'll hit this launch agent button and now you're in the command center. On the left, you've got the main panels. Stuff like your tool timeline history, use cases for the agent, feature info, and settings. I'll show each of those in a second, but the big idea is this isn't just a chat, you have visibility into what's happening. In the chat area, you've got a few core controls. You have ask versus agent mode, ask is for guidance, agent is for execution. You've got the model selector, you've got your credits and your usage, and tools for adding context like selected actors or selected assets. There's also stuff like image input and voice input, depending on how you want to work. And then the most important part, when Flop runs, you can literally watch the tool calls and execution in real time. So if something goes wrong, it's not a black box. You can see exactly where it failed and what it tried next. Okay, so once you've got the plugin installed in your project and you've got the project open and you're already signed in on the website, the next step is signing in inside the Unreal Editor 2. That's what links your website session to your actual Unreal Engine connection. And the cool side effect of that is, you can technically 
control Unreal Engine from any device, anywhere, as long as you're signed into the same account on both ends. So yes, in theory, you could have Unreal running on your PC, open the web app on your mobile device, on your phone, and control your editor from your mobile device if you're logged in on the same account. I'll do a longer video on that later on, but if you want to test it right now, you definitely can. Once you're signed in on both the editor and the site, you should see the little connection icon in the top right light up green. That's your signal you're connected and you're good to start prompting the agent. This is why we feel comfortable shipping this beta because you're not just blindingly trusting it. If something looks off, you can literally see where it went wrong and half the time you can fix it by just giving it one more constraint and rerunning it. Next we have the use cases tab. This is basically so you don't have to guess how to prompt this thing. The biggest difference between a bad and a good run is usually just did you give it enough constraints and did you give it context. And then we have the feature info tab where I'm actually laying out all the tools and product features in detail like the ask versus the agent mode, model selections, credit usage, image input, voice input, selected actors, and basically all the stuff you'll want to know before you start running the bigger task. It's there so you can look at the UI and not be like, wait, what does this button do? You can take a look at it, understand what each feature is meant for, and then immediately use it the right way. Now that you've seen the UI, I'm going to start running a few examples to show what it actually looks like using Flop. And I'm going to keep the timeline open so you can see what's happening behind the scenes. When it comes to the simple things and working with primitive shapes, the model is excellent. It can build together structures exactly how you want it. Once again, you need to make sure you're being clear and concise with your prompts. One thing we've added to help remove the ambiguity from your prompts is the clarification questions tool. You can see in the video the yellow questions that get returned before sending your request off to the agent. The clarification tool asks you questions that would help specify and clarify your prompts for the model to understand better. You also get quick answers back from the clarification tool so you don't have to type things out. And honestly, I'd love for you to try pushing it a bit today, build something more complex with shapes. That's one of the best places to see the agent's strengths right now. But also don't feel like you have to live with the primitives. You can absolutely ask it to work with any of your real assets directly out of your content browser. It's really good at figuring out what you have just by giving it a name or a folder to look into and then building something out of it. If you want better results, this is where attaching context helps too. Selected assets, selected actors, screenshots, anything that removes guessing. And I know we're going to get a ton of blueprint questions, so just to address it, yes, you can do blueprint related work in this beta. You can create blueprints from assets, add variables and functions, and do general in-editor blueprint manipulation. It's not as built out yet as we would like to, but for the common blueprint workflows, it can save you some time creating variables and functions and other things like that. If you want a full breakdown of what's supported and the best ways to prompt it, check out the use cases and the FAQ sections on the site. That's where we keep the most up-to-date examples and guidance as the beta evolves. While it's running, here's what I want you to pay attention to. How quickly it gets into action once it understands the request. How it uses context when I attach selected actors or assets versus when I don't. And how it behaves when something fails. Does it recover? Does it retry? Does it fix the call? And when you try this, please use the feedback tab. Seriously, even if it's small, if you hit a bug or something feels off, drop it in here with what you ask it to do, what happened instead, and any other additional information that you can provide us to help debug the situation. All right, and that's the beta. Just to repeat the important parts, once again, this is a beta. It's powerful, but it's not perfect yet. It will hit errors sometimes, but it's going to retry, and a lot of times it will land it on the second or third attempt, so be patient with it. And once again, if you want access, you can go to the flopperam.com website right now and sign up so you're on the list. And if you want guaranteed access to the beta, join the Patreon at the second prestige or above. That's the fastest path to get in. And once you're in, use it hard. Try to break it, send feedback through the feedback tab. That's how this turns from cool beta into something actually unstoppable. Thank you to everyone who signed up for the beta. Seriously, the fact that you're willing to jump in early, deal with the rough edges, and help shape this into something real means a lot. And a huge special thank you to everyone supporting on Patreon. You're the reason we're moving so fast on this. Keep expanding the tools, and we're going to keep the beta going with credits and improvements. Please like and subscribe. And special thank you to our higher tier Patreons, Chester, Bryant, Ewan, Cassidy, Hyperlord, and Avery.